I'm really hyper right now. I wanted a metal tech, but we have this monsoon going on right now. We're going to look forward to all the treasures that Storm brings into our shores because we have a calm surf here. I have the score. I got the double score. What a great opportunity during the winter months with a new machine that just came out to show you the target IDs on this. I'm using a friend of mine's board. You may know him as uh, Metal Technic NYC. But right now I'm going to borrow his 0 to 60 because that's what the score and the double score ring up as. That's the total VDI scale. And we have all different types of metals. We have rings, all types of American coins, gold coin, gold ring, silver coins, mixed metals, and not so desirable targets like bottle caps and iron. Plenty of stuff to show the VDI chart. If you stick around, you're going to learn a lot about this metal detector and other aspects of metal detecting. You're not going to want to miss this. Hello, Louis DeFeo here. I am one of the administrators of iRateMetalDetectors.com. We are going to be providing this free video, very in-depth VDI video about the Nocta scores. If you want to support us, our channel, our website, and our efforts, we put tons of hours, including our families, traveling, just a long time to put this together. You can download the PDF file for $11.25. That's half the price it costs to come over a bridge to Staten Island. It's very cheap for the amount of work we put into it. It's great to have. It's very easy to skim through it. I think you're going to enjoy it. You could also for free watch the entire video. Hey, you could do both. There are teachable moments in here that even if you don't have the knock the score, it's going to be very helpful. Now, why should you come to us for the info? Well, we volunteer our time to be the advocates, the cheerleaders for the metal detecting hobby, not only on these platforms, but also in non-for-profit metal detecting clubs. We also want to preserve our rights to metal detect in the United States and elsewhere. That's, that, that's the main goal. Not only that, to educate all of you out there. There's not only target IDs on this video, it's also going to be a lot of teachable moments. You're going to find it very educational and informative. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Stay tuned. Hello, diggers and diggettes out there. We have a treat for you today. We spent a lot of time and effort putting in the work and have the most comprehensive, in-depth hundreds of targets to try to find out what target IDs correspond to the metal you were metal detecting. VDI, also known as Target ID, stands for Visual Display <clears throat> Indicator. This is a feature found in many metal detectors that provide a numerical or graphical representation of the target's characteristics on the display screen. In layman's terms, it's the numbers you're going to see on your control box. The VDI helps users identify the likely type of metal or object they've detected based on the conductivity. Conductivity varies depending on the metal and other properties of the target. Different metals have different conductivity levels, and the VDI can assist detectors in making informed decisions about whether to dig a target or not. Typically, the higher VDI values are associated with more conductive metals like coins and silver, while lower values may indicate less conductive items like iron, foil, and gold. All right, we are in park. We have sensitivity halfway up because there's a lot of EMI in the building. Yes, multi-frequency one. Both these detectors have three search modes, park, field, and beach. I felt it was um, very important to tell you that the t uh, ID resolution for IDs through 11 through 15 is different in park versus the field mode. Um, just to give you a heads up. Now over here in park mode, it will automatically reject one through 10. I believe custom, you could go up to 12, but you wanna be careful. Gold targets may fall between 11 and 12, the IDs. Depending on what you're detecting, you have to keep that in mind. And sometimes even in the ferrous range, you may get a gold tone. It's probably not as popular, but keep that in mind. And you'll see where gold falls. Somewhere in that range majority, but there's other target IDs. And I have a clad dime. The purpose of me doing this, I'm going to show you the target ID on this double score. Then I'm going to turn this off, turn on the score to show you it is the same target ID. Now we're on the knock to score, multi-frequency one, all metal mode, park. I have the sensitivity up halfway because of the EMI. Let me zoom out so you can see this. And that's for a clad dime. Start out with some zinc pennies, and I'm going to show you why. These are just terrible for metal detecting. Watch this. Every zinc penny from 1982 and up is zinc. They deteriorate. They come up all different target IDs. Let's see. We got this crusted one. 13. Look at that. That's in the gold range, okay? Grab another one. Look at this. 41. Another one. 41, 42. 41, 42. Let's get a crusty one. Look, this one's a little chewed. 
32. So as you can see, depending on how corroded it is, and these things corrode fast, you're going to get a different target ID. But if you have a good zinc in good condition, it's usually 41. Look at that. 41, 42. Now that we did the clad dime, I have a silver dime. The clad dime was 45. Silver dime? 46, 47. So you're getting a higher ID with the silver. Now let's see a thinner one that's oxidized, been in the ground, been dug. Ooh, 42. So a coin that's worn down with less silver is going to be a lower ID. So the 46. 42. Four, now look, that thinner silver dime is coming up just like a zinc penny. So do you really want to get rid of your new zinc pennies? You might be losing out on some thinner new silver. New clad quarter. Tell me if you like the new redesign in the comments below. Do you like the new George Washington on this quarter or what? And I did test another clad quarter. It is the same target ID to show you. It is a solid 50 clad quarter. Copper pennies. 45. Gets one that's not so tarnished. 46, 46, 46. So this is interesting. We have a clad dime and a silver dime, 45 and 46. And we also have copper penny, 45, copper one, 46. So you might be digging some pennies with this silver dime out there. Clad nickel, solid, 26. This is a newer one. 26. We have something interesting here. We have a bunch of war nickels. And let me tell you, there's inconsistencies, whether it's the metal or the breakdown. I don't know. But every one of these comes up a t different target ID. Watch this. 26. 41. 37. 41. 25. 31. 29. 26. That's all these nickels, all those different target ID numbers. It's a wild card. If you're in an old spot and you get a banging signal like that, repeatable, dig it. Just to give you an idea, there's clad nickels and war nickels. 25, one was 25, three was 26, one was 29, you have two at 41. So it's a wild card. It's a toss up. You have to decide whether you're going to dig it up or not. Let's do some wheat pennies. Where there is wheat, there surely is silver. 45, 45, 46, 44, 45, 2 at 45, 3 at 45. Wow, that's a nice shiny one. We have a clean weedy here. Look at that. 46. Seems like the cleaner coins may go up one. 46. 3 at 46, 3 at 45, 1 at 44. I'm Indian head sense that with Doug. I have one nice clean one here. 35. 37, 35, 33, wow, 41, all the way from 35 to 41, this is a thinner one, 33, look how thin that is, 35, 35 is the majority, 34, 38, 32, flat, look, 37, so we got 33 to 41 on these, wow. This was the 41, I believe. Look at that, 41 for this Indian head scent. And then on the low end of the spectrum, 32. This is really interesting. 32 all the way to 41, we have Indian head scents. Now, depending on how much alloy is in the coin, you know, there were some years that there were fatter Indians during the Civil War. Also, being in the earth, all the wear and tear these coins get, they erode, get smoother and thinner. They may ring up lower. These are the questions you have to ask yourself. Depending on how many trash targets are out there, what are you really looking to find? And what range are you looking to find? I mean, 32 through 41 in a range of 1 through 60, something to think about. Since we brought up the fat Indian head scent, I have one right here. Look how thick that is. Let's see what it rings up at. 34, solid. Two cent piece. 43. That's what I was getting. Bottle caps in Coney Island. 43. Large scent. 55 solid. Smoother large scent. Another large scent. Solid 53. Check this out. 48, 51, 53, 55. Now, they're all bangers. They're all high tones. You want to dig all those. But look, you can just see the range depending on the composition of the coin, condition, how thin it is. And so on. Check out this beauty. Let's see what she rings up as. 45. The weedy range with that one. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to blow your mind. This is not a Doug coin. This is a Morgan silver dollar. Let's see what it rings up as. 
57. This is an 8 real. 57, just like the Morgan dollar. This is a silver dollar. 59, almost pegged at 60. And this is a Diwali silver coin. 59. All right. So let's put two of these together. We'll put this 8 real and the Morgan together. Ooh, it's pegged out at 60. Look, you got a little bit of an iron grunt in there because I don't know if this could process it all. Right? There's a lot of silver there. Three coins. Look at that. More silver. You're getting a little bit of iron tone in there, even though it's ringing up high. Look, it's all over the place. Now let's put the all four together. This is really interesting. Let me back up a little. Oh, my goodness. Tell me the truth, folks out there. Is anyone digging that out? Oh, you might see that 58. You'll be like, ah, eh, I'm turning it around. I don't know. I'm not digging this. No way. Now, I've used many detectives. On another video, I'm going to do this to show you. Let's back it up a little. Nope. Four silver coins together. So if there's a hoard, this has happened on every detect we've tested. Very interesting. But as you see, you're getting 57 to 60. Dig those. It could be a big silver coin. And it was working with two coins. The more silver we add, the more messed up it gets. That was with three, four, nothing. Leave a comment below. What do you think about that? Four giant silver coins here. As you can see, we have that. But when you put them together, I was getting a one. Some buffalo nickels. 26. 24. 24. 23. 24. Three at 24, one at 23, and one at 26. All right, let's get on to shield nickels. 23. 23. 23. All 23 consistent. So if you want a shield nickel, be sure to check out the target ID 23. I'm liking 23. Comes up with the buffalo, the V-nickel, and the shield nickel. All 23. Washington quarters. 51. 51. 52. 51. Just over the clad quarter. See, I like that. And 52. So there was a distinguishable... Target ID. All the clad quarters were coming up consistently 50. So if it's in that range, just dig it out. It's a good, that's a, definitely a good target ID. I'm gonna test a bunch of silver Kennedys and halves, and I'm gonna test a clad Kennedy right here. 53. Okay, we're gonna test these Benjis, Walkers, and other ha silver halves. 55, Walker. 54, Benji. 55, Walker. 54, 54. All the walkers are 54. Look at that. 55, two Benjis, four 54s. 55. Yeah, 55, just like the Benji. Kennedy half, 1969. 54. Benji, this looks like a proof. 55. 54. 67. 54. Upper half and a Benji, 55. Walker and Kennedy, 54, and the clad was a 53. Mercury Dimes, 46. 46. 45. 46. Mark, 45 through 47. Barber Dimes, let's go. 46. 45. 46. 46. 46. Barbara Dimes rang up in 45 and 46. Check out, you got Mercs 45 and 46 too. Have clad and silver dimes in 45, 46, and then also that one Merc that had 47. Okay, we have five seated dimes. Let's see it. What we got here? 45, 46, 42, 45, 45, 46, 42. All right, we have three trimes that we're going to test the target ID for. 38. 32. Wow, what a range. 38. 38 and 32. Only other target ID so far in 32 was an Indian head scent. And a 38, Indian head scent also. What a trime. All right, guys, I have a Morgan dollar here, silver Morgan dollar, and a silver chain. Let's move over to our scale, which is going to read in grams. Now let's measure the weight. This is very important to see. 
We have 35 grams of that silver chain. Now let's put the Morgan on there. 27 grams. 26, 27 grams. So the chain is heavier. Let's see what it rings up on the score. It's very important to see this. Morgan dollar. 58. Now remember, that is less weight, but it's solid. It's a solid piece. Now we have the silver chain. It's all over the place. You might say it's an iffy signal when you're in the field. It'll be, you know, it's not going to be perfectly bunched up. May, may not be, maybe spread out. It's repeatable though. So you got to take that into consideration. Coins are more likely to be a consistent beep. When you have a chain that's spread out like that, you might get a iffy signal. So take that into consideration when you're deciding whether to dig or not. And we'll put that Morgan over at 58. That's our first one. That was 1849 gold coin. Let's see. Solid 23. Look at that. Interesting. It's just like a 13 on the Equinox. A lot of times you get a nickel. This 23, we have V-nickel, Buffalo, Shield nickel. So it comes in that range. You want to dig those nickels out. And I'm charging my uh, detector right now. Look, it's always good to have one of these shafts where you could retract it. This comes with it standard. Look, this thing is just sitting there charging on my way to where I got to go. Let's jump into this silver jewelry and miscellaneous stuff. Tiffany and Company of New York, really nice. 45, 43. It all depends on how, you know, you have this solid piece, then you have this chain with all these holes. It all depends, look. All depends on how it's laying in the dirt. 46. Who else only finds one earring? Has anyone ever found a pair together? 35. We have this baseball silver charm with the chain. 50. Do this iron stainless steel watch. You have different metals in there. You'd be over this thing right now saying, should I dig this? It all depends on which way it's laying too. Look at that. Let's so uh, hypothetically, it's like that. You got a 28. I have these two pendants, one copper, one has iron in it. It looks like gold. Too bad it's not gold. I would say that's a one. Then I have this copper one, 49. Let's hit a couple of these skeleton keys. We're in the relics. Who doesn't love finding these things? I think one of my favorite finds, 41 with a little tooth. 43. Well, we did a couple of keys. I'm going to go through all of these and throw it on the target ID board. And if you want to just get a target ID Bible for the score, double score, link's going to be below. We're going to hit every one of these and put it on the board. Right off the bat, look, this is a nice thin one. has the full teeth in there. 22. This is my first 22 target. I would definitely dig that. Okay, we finished the keys. Look at this range. Kind of over here, over here. Concentrated. Depends on all the size, material, oxidation. Oh, we have this silver one I didn't show before. That rang up higher, 46. Now remember, these two machines go up to a target ID of 60. All right, now we're getting into artillery, bullets, grape shot, all these different types, musket balls, pistol balls, bullets. I'm going to check all these target IDs. It should be interesting. Another buckle. 36. Look at this iron ball. Five. Solid. Thimbles. 32, 20 for the thimble, 29 for that other thimble. Smallest croto bell or bell I've ever seen in my life. Look at this thing. It has a ringer in there. It's hollow. Plates. 40. I have a bent heel plate, so possibly you'll find one like that. 43. So one of those heel plates, the buckle, um, and there was one Indian that all rang up his 40. This bullet. 42. These bullets on the beach. 30. Okay, we have a three ringer, lead bullet. You find a lot of these down south. People have found them up north. Not as common, but uh, I know people love digging these Civil War style bullets. And it's 33, 34, just like the musket ball. Smashed one. 32. It's not fully intact. Rung up a little lower. Interesting. These lead musket balls, they're all in the same range. Either 34 or 33. It's very interesting. That smash three ringer, same target ID as that silver chain. 10 is by itself. Look at that. That's after all these targets, that stands there. So if you're looking for a grape shot or some kind of iron like that, which is an awesome thing to have in your collection, what to find for the property owner, you may want to dig that. We have a whole slew of buttons. I'm going to wave some on camera, 
then we'll just plow through all of these and put them on the target ID so you could see them. It all depends on the type of metal, what happened to it, did it get hollowed out, did the ground change the condition? So these target IDs could be different. Not everything is going to be in the perfect condition, brand new. So target ID changes over time. You get a general idea of target IDs when they're consistent, and you'll find that when you dig a lot of clad. But as you get into these old areas, you know you're in an old area, you're going to want to dig everything. I, I hate to say that cliche, but when you're in a colonial area, deep in the woods, or on, even on a beach, because salt changes everything, you may want, if it's a consistent target, if you're in tight sand and you want to, and you get a deep target that's small, I would def definitely give it a try. And dig. Look how nice that button is. 42. And that was 33. Now look at this one. 16. All right, depending on size, material, we have buttons. This is a big spectrum, but we have a general idea of where they're falling mostly. If you want the target ID sheet, we have a Bible. I'm going to leave the link below. You can download it, keep it on you, study it so you can have a general idea of what targets you may want to dig when you're in the field. Hey, the most common targets, I would say, in these parks would be either iron, pull tabs, bottle caps. These bottle caps, they can ring up depending on how they corrode and what material they are. All different types of numbers. Here we go. We have iron nail. I personally do not discriminate this because gold could be a very low tone. Five. Eleven. On the top of some champagne or wine bottles, you get these, well, I noticed. Five with a high tone also. I might dig that. Pissed off. Whoa, 43. What rang up as a 43? Two cent piece. Ooh, you might want to dig that. Three. A nail with a head on it. Three again. Oh, that's a screw, rather. All different types of pull tabs. This is what is known as a beaver tail. Just some metal detecting jargon for you. 21. We have regular modern soda can pull tab. 27. I have the beaver tail with the old pull tab. 25 is definitely a nickel signal. One of the nickel signals. Look, sometimes you'll get one of these in a park, of course. And the... 27. I would say that's a two. This one is a little bent, corroded. Look at that, different number. 29. Five. We're trying to be really thorough. And look how dense these finds are with these target IDs. Look at 43. There is so much good finds on 43. But you have to remember, when I was on Coney Island Beach... I was pulling a lot of bottle caps off the beach. So is that a target ID you really want to get rid of? Best thing to do is learn what they sound like. Usually on the edge, you get that grunt. But man, let me tell you, this is a good target ID. And of course, things change in different conditions. Just after saying that, I have this silver ring. 43. This is a pendant, really oxidized. Look at that, thick silver. Look at that. It has to be clean. 54. Hey, I find it very important to show you different sizes in terms of target ID, coin size, solid things. And then you sometimes you get these, like I was mentioning before, hollow parts, obscure shapes and sizes. Let's see what these three earrings ring up as. They have silver on them. 36. 43. It's in the jumpy. 21. Look at this locket. It's hollow, silver. 41, wow. Similar type of uh, jewelry. This one is an earring. 20. That one rang up like a pull tab, like this button, and a copper symbol. Check that out. Uh, I would say my favorite link. I know Cuban links are one of the most popular, but this is called a Figaro link chain. Okay, we're going to bunch it up. 20. Uh, what do you know? I got another silver on 20. We just put an earring there. That's when it's bunched up. So if it's spread out, you might get a sporadic target ID. 47, look how beautiful that is. To be honest, I love finding religious pieces. I don't know what it is, I just do. Very thin silver earring. Look at that. Check out this baseball 1930 pendant silver baseball. First prize. I'm sure they were upset to lose that. 
54 solid. Not many of those. I love finding personal items. Look at this Pandora bracelet. That's beautiful. All right, let's see what it rings up as. We have all different sizes, density, pieces of metal. So that's why you're going to have different target IDs. It's all together. It's not a solid piece. Last Pandora rang up as, I believe, a 33. And this one has less charms. Let's see what this one rings up as. See what I'm talking about? Density, how um, thick and thin parts are. Now that's a 22. Nowhere near the other Pandora bracelet. Look. Have a silver earring and two keys. Beautiful ashtray. I want you to take a look at these foils. We have a small piece here. We have a folded piece, a more dense piece, and a giant piece. Watch what happens because normally people do not take the time to do this. I personally have not done this. This is my first time doing this with foil. Watch how mind-blowing this is. So we have this one piece. Okay, we got an 11. Put it to the side. Got this one. 12. We got this piece. Look, it's thicker, more dense, more metal. 45. This is all the same material. Giant one. You find this in parks near benches. You find this on the beach because people, you know, they don't clean up after themselves. So watch. And what does that teach us, guys? It all depends on the size, the condition, the type, and the density of whatever you're digging or metal detecting. Who else likes to find rings? If you do, give a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up. All right, everybody. We made it this far. This is filling up nicely, and we're going to fill out all this information on our Target ID Bible. We really want to fill this in, and one of my favorite things to find is gold. Now, check out all these rings, all this gold we're going to test out to fill in this Target ID chart that we have here, and uh, it's going to be fun. Almost like a mystery box. Do you want to take what's behind the curtain or take what's in the mystery box? That's what Target ID 43 is. To me. We have a slew of copper rings here. Teachable moment. Very good to see this. Look at this ring right here. It has a gap. Anything that has a gap is going to give you a throw off the target ID. Unlike a solid piece of a coin. Watch this. Hear that blip, blip, blip? You might think that's a bottle cap. I would. Because it's like blip, blip. So did you go to the outside here, right? If that was a bottle cap, you would get that grunt. But... Anything that has a piece missing, you're going to get a different type of signal. Now, here's a solid ring. See the difference? 43. Same target ID. It's less jumpy because there's no gap. There's another copper ring. 45. Now, if I saw that in the sand, I'd be like, oh, my God, look at this. We struck out. <laughs> now, we have thinner rings. 43. This is super thin. I guarantee this is a lower range, but copper is pretty conductive. Let's see. Oh, our prediction was correct. Whoa, look at this honker of a ring. It's a Mercedes. 46. You know, much bigger one. So you're going to get a higher signal. It's usually the case. He has a super thin. 28. 43. 43 is the number one number today. 41. 24. It's almost it's a 20 target ID difference. Look at that. This is really interesting. Look, it's there's a break in that ring. It's copper. Watch this. Eight. I would think that's gold. Digging that out or some type of foil. You need to take all these numbers into consideration when you're digging. On the beach, I dig anything solid. Keep that in mind. But this will give you a general idea of what you're looking at. Most of the rings are in the low 40s. But as the size changes, as the brakes um, change, you're going to get different target IDs. Have these tungsten rings. Let's test those out. 39. 23. 36. Nice one. 37. 27. What's interesting, target ID 36, we have all these finds, right? Silver, most conductive metal. Very thin here. Because this tungsten is so thick, it rang up the same target ID. It's very interesting. Take a look at that. All these different finds of target ID 36. We have to take this into consideration.
teachable moment depends on the amount of metal, what kind of metal it is that you're digging. If something's repeating that hard on the beach, dig it out. Things change. Things are different sizes, different metals. You never know what you're going to get. But this goes to show you, if you're not taking the time to do all this, you get more of an understanding of conductivity, types of metals, types of target IDs. It's very fascinating to see this unfold doing this for so long. We found this nut and I haven't had this target ID yet. Let's ring it up as a four. All right, I have a slew of stainless steel rings. Let's go over and see what they ring up at. 19. 21. Smaller one. 18. 17. 22. 19. 19. Okay, here's the stainless steel rings. 22, 21, a lot on 19, 18, 17, and there's one smaller one on 15. It's for the stainless steel rings. And wait till we get to the gold and also the gold with silver. It's very intriguing. You don't want to miss this. Look at this one. Teachable moment, guys. Gold with silver. Silver is the most conductive metal. So watch Mixture. what it does. I'm turning it now. Look. Nothing is ringing up low when it's a mixture of silver and gold. It's like mid-range, right? Here's another one. Mixture. I'm turning it now. Look. Nothing is ringing up low when it's a mixture of silver and gold. It's like mid-range, right? Here's another one. All these are in the 40s and high 30s. Look at this. 44. All right, so now you know. You might have something gold even with a higher target if it's mixed with silver. Off to the platinum ones. Just to let you know, I had a gold class ring that came up as a 35. All right, platinum. 31. 20. 32. 27. See, they're all different sizes. 17. They're all over the place. See that? But they are, look, when you have a good metal, that's, even if you go fast, you're not going to lose it. We're moving on to the elusive silver rings. Ooh, that's a nice one. This is a strange one. 54. Let's get a super thin one with a little charm on there. 45. 46. Next. 50. 46. 45. Two or 46. Look how these are filling up. 46, 45, 44, 43. They're dominating these target IDs. Teachable moment, my friends. Look, one side is much thicker than the other. Now, how these metal detectors are set up, it's trying to process what's going on here. Why do we have two different targets here, two different sizes? So it's trying to process this, and that's why we're getting all different types of readings here. Depending on how it's laying in the soil, you're going to get different target IDs. Even if it's like this, it's still reading the bottom part like that. So let's see really trying to dial in but i'm getting 57 the most yeah it depends on how it's sitting there's something about signet rings that i just love they're personal personal items are probably one of my favorite things to find i'll say 50 on that let's get into these gold rings now there's different alloys that are mixed with the gold when you're making jewelry now in the book we'll be more specific with the carrots for the rings but just know depending on size carrots you're going to get certain target ids that are going to vary if you download the book You'll be able to see more specific. White gold. Look at that gold ring. Nice. Another 29. Gold ring with some onyx in there. Nice. Another decent size. Has some weight. 35. Beautiful heavy ring right here. 37. This is a 14K ring. 31. All right, we have some rose gold here. 39. I just fished for another rose gold. Odd shape, just to be scientific about it. 33. We have the giant M. Solid. The honker. See all these different, you got a thinner part on the bottom. You have creases in the top for CR. 
So let's see what happens. 40, little choppy. You might call this an iffy signal, but I would dig that all. Oh, you move it back it off a little. 39. Some gold with ice there. 21. 14K engagement ring. Solid 29. I thought we were going to fill all the bottom slots. It's not always the case. This is a, a definitely a learning experience for myself. And I hope this information is very valuable for you. Look at all these targets. All the way up to 60. We didn't get the 60. We're going to try to find a target that fills that slot. All right. Next gold ring. 24. Here we go. 21. Now this thin gold ring rings up. 17. Check that gold ring out. Another gold ring a little bit thinner on the bottom. Good old 27. First gold ring in 27. 24. Let's see how that rings up. Again, thin part, big part. Depends on how it's facing your coil. I would dig that. It's 11. Small piece of gold earring. 11. This is very thin gold with beads inside. 13, but it is extremely thin. I'm very impressed. Another gold earring, very small. The square face is facing the detector. 11, but look, if you put it sideways, it's more faint because the shape. Solid 17 for this gold pendant. This is a monster 14K um, necklace. It's very popular, these Cubans. So I'm just curious to see how much this weighs. 43 grams of 14K. 13. I love 13 for on the Mind Lab Equinox, but uh, yeah. That's a great number. Look at that. Two golds on there. Big, that's what I'm interested in, that big fat gold. Here's another thin gold chain. It's getting it. 11. Super thin, super light. See, that thicker Cuban was a 12. I mean, I'm 13. I'm sorry. And all similar ranges down here. Some of them are higher, but uh, like the mixed silver ones, but similar to the Equinox. I the tiger. Or lion. 14. I only had a silver coin and a tiny button there, but there you go. Crucifix. The mixed gold one. It's a pendant. Another 13. 10K Italian Figaro chain. Right? 11. Now let's bunch it all up. It's hard to do it one hand. It's 11 either way. Either whether it's straight or bundled. Now here's my going to be like one of the most important tests this very thin chain everyone loves to say the equinox well it's true i mean i've seen the equinox pull thin small gold things out that even the x cal 2 wouldn't get this is the score double score let's see how this reacts it's getting it and my sensitivity isn't all the way up it's an error test remember that yes we know that but there are detectors that won't pick this up this is super thin. And when I say super thin, I can't... Let's see what it weighs. All right. One gram. Not even... It's not even registering as a gram. And that detector picked that up. That is super impressive. Super impressive. This is ex very hollow, very light gold earring. 11. Crucifix. 12. Gold booklet. Look how beautiful this chain is. It has some weight to it, too. Let's see what we have. The elusive grills. Remember, these are all different carrots, all different sizes, weights, thin, thick. And that came up with some thinner, small silver chains, that silver earring, a thimble, a big button. There you go. Golden locket. 21. Remember, this is hollow. All right, gold. 27. Golden crucifix with a chain. 13. Yeah. We have this hollow gold earring. 11. This gold pendant. 15, I'd say. Off to the platinum ones. Just to let you know, I had a gold class ring that came up as a 35. All right. Platinum. 
31. 20. 32. 27. Wow. See, they're all different sizes. 17. They're all over the place. See that? But they are. Look, when you have a good metal, that's, even if you go fast, you're not going to lose it. Ooh, solid 11. I love that sound. Strong. Got a smaller, older one. It's very thin. A lot of hollow points. It's a faint target, but if you get in that low tone, dig it out. Another fancy signet ring. Look at that. <laughs> and we're showing a lot of gold because, you know, a lot of beach hunters out there want to see that. And this is what you get. 19 seems to be a lot of rings on that target idea. I like it. Nice. A small gold signet ring. 19 again. All right, really quick, we'll go over this again just to show you how much we're doing here. How many different sizes there are. And carrots. Look at that. There's a lot more concentrated towards the bottom. But as you can see, there's a lot of engagement rings that are down here at a higher number. I never thought there'd be so many target IDs for these golds, but there is. I really like the 13. Most of it is thick gold. I like that. But um, this is a lot of work we're putting into this. A lot of waiting bands we have here today. Here's another 14K one. 32. Gold ring. White gold, 14 carat. Another rose gold. 44. 16. 20. 29, 19. So after doing all the targets, I did not get a 60, but I put a re out with this Morgan and let's see what happens. 60. Any more silver would probably overload the machine, but there you go. So that's going to be our 60. So if you have two silver dollars and it's 60, that's a good sign. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you found this video educational and informative. If you have any other detectives you want us to do a Bible on, leave a comment below or any other inquiry. Make sure you visit iratemetaldetectives.com. You could also join our blog and forum, interact, network. It's just a great time. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Keep swinging.